Namaste. And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. Mananam Anjali Hey. And today we're going to be doing a temple video, the secret underground zone of the Taj Mahal. Okay, we're going to start that over again because okay. it's not a temple. Oh, yeah, it's a mask. Mm hmm. I was like, why? <laughs> it's school. Temple, uh, temple, 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 temple. Like, mm. it's not. But you kind of assume it is. But it's a, it's a monument. It's a, um, really a grave. But yeah. that's not how it's portrayed. It's portrayed as a temple until yeah. you go to sixth grade and you learn about that it's a grave and the person who built it went to prison so he didn't get to see the final product. Mm. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> yep. Three, two, one. <laughs> Namaste. And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. Mananam Anjali Hey. And today we're going to be doing the secret underground zone of the Taj Mahal. What is inside? So this is by Praveen Mohan. And we've seen some of his work. I don't think yeah. we've actually reacted to anything. But lately you guys have been asking for us to react to some of his stuff. I know he does very, like, investigative research. And he goes yeah. to a lot of different temples and different places in India and talks about the secrets. Um, so this will be interesting to watch. We hear a lot of stuff about the secrets that are under the Taj Mahal. Um, like under some of the other mosques in India, we know some of them have were temples underneath or were yeah. other structures underneath. Um, so it will be interesting to see what he has to say. Uh, Anjali has learned somewhat of the truth in school about the Taj Mahal, though I more feel like, of the truth than we have. So. Yeah, then you get more than what most people get like you think of india this is one of those monuments you think of when you think of india um which it's a beautiful don't get me wrong um but when you hear a little bit of the history behind it um kind of takes a little bit of the beauty away from it yeah um but it is definitely known and it's definitely a tourist attraction though we kind of wish something like dashra the mountain man's like him carving the passageway through the mountain was much more years. when you think of india you think of that right that would be something that they should build some beautiful buildings around it and make that like that is something to aspire like you can do anything in life if you have will power and you don't mind it taking time because sometimes the good things in life take time perseverance dedication and and seeing it through to the end um and it's it's amazing and now the the you know they can go back and forth that's something it maybe isn't beautiful but the beauty is in the eye of the beholder right yeah so we kind of go back and forth a little bit about you know we need more people to watch our channel like us to learn and learn and learn some more about india to know that india is not just the taj mahal and it's not just you know um I feel like a poverty is another one that people usually think of when they think of India. So it's like Taj Mahal or, or you know, poor people. Yeah, and that's good. I feel like it's almost not either one of those things. No, There's because... There's so many beautiful things When in you India. think about it, you think Taj Mahal and then right beside it, a bunch of poor people are like living standards that not yeah, clean like, water things like yeah, that like not clean we water. don't really see the in between or what really happened or what, what really... real india is all about and yeah like we said we've done this channel for over a year um you know we've learned, learned some stuff so much. we've learned a whole lot from this one year and um, daddy has taught us things as we've grown but this has really opened our eyes to a lot of stuff um amazing amazing things and i know we have only scratched the surface we Not haven't either. done stuff like... from every states we haven't done food from every states we haven't done temples and different touristic we haven't hit all of india everything but we've learned but so we much have more learned so much so much about some of the beautiful places like the gateway of india like the jagannath temple like the golden temple like um you know there's just um I have a bunch of names of different cities in my head, and I'm blanking food. right now. Oh, food. Anji <laughs> loves the food. Um, 
there's just, you know, Mumbai and Rajasthan, that's what I was yeah. thinking of. Um, you know, there's so many beautiful cities. There's so many beautiful festivals. It's so much more than what you think it's it is. It's so much more than what the media portrays India as, the schools teach you about India. Um, there's so much, so much more to learn. And I know we have only scratched the surface yeah. and this is like a little bit of this a little bit of history a little bit of you know today's stuff a little bit of fun we've done a little bit of everything but it's it's a lot and I would like more people to understand more the real about India. the real India as opposed to just thinking the Taj Mahal so we're gonna start this up because I know he has a lot to say yeah hey guys I'm at the Taj Mahal and here we can see a mysterious passage on the floor that goes directly underground. Now, if we take a closer look, it is not only locked with meshed metal doors, but if you look inside the doors, it has been covered with wooden boards. This not only means that you're not allowed to enter this passage, but you're also not even allowed to see what's inside. Good question. Where is this underground passage going? This is located just outside the main structure of Taj Mahal. But if you walk inside the Taj Mahal, you can see yet another massive passage that goes underground. This is also locked, but there is a sign that says, don't stop here or take pictures really? of this closed passage. Why should a sealed passage not be photographed? Does Taj Mahal really have a secret basement underneath? Authorities reluctantly accept that Taj Mahal does have an underground area and they say that there is a chamber which contains the tombs of King Shah Jahan and his wife Mumtaj. But at ground level, we can also see two more tombs, which are also the tombs of the same king and queen. Why would any dead person need two tombs, yeah, one no, at ground no, level no, and the other no, yeah. in the underground? They say that the underground chamber and tombs are also made of white marble, just like the rest of Taj Mahal, which is entirely made of white marble. But is the Taj Mahal made completely out of white marble? To understand the truth, let's go to a side where visitors never go. We have to go into the nearby river and then observe what's going on. You can see that it has a huge base which is not made of white marble, but it's made of red sandstone. In fact, all the structures surrounding the Taj Mahal are made of red sandstone. This is best visible from the riverside. Remember the underground passage which was sealed off in plain sight? This is also located on the riverside. The passage is clearly made of red sandstone, but look at the material on the floor. This is also red sandstone. On the riverside, there is something very interesting hiding in plain sight. Did you notice yeah. this strange rectangle on the basement? This is one of the entrances that directly leads into the underground zone of Taj Mahal. How do we know this? Because an American architect by the name of Marvin Mills took clear pictures of this in 1974 and it had wooden doors but was locked so he couldn't see what was inside. He took a small piece of wood from the door and sent it for radiocarbon dating. And the result showed that the wood predates Taj Mahal by at least 250 years. Immediately after this information hit the newspapers, authorities removed the wooden door and sealed it off with bricks and plaster, which is why it appears in a different color now. Why is the government repeatedly sealing off all the entrances leading to the underground zone of Taj Mahal? Authorities 
have come up with a rather strange explanation. According to them, the basement contains mummified bodies of the king and queen. If these bodies are exposed to the atmosphere, they will get contaminated. They say this is why all the entrances to the basement have been sealed off to keep the basement airtight. This is really strange because the floor of the Taj Mahal is full of ventilation shafts which directly go underground. If you look through, they are so deep that it just becomes dark. If authorities are really preventing the exposure of the mummies, which are already inside sealed marble tombs, why did they leave these vents open? Why do they have to close only the bigger holes exactly. through which human beings can enter? Hmm. It's easy to understand that authorities don't care about the air going in, hmm. but just don't want human beings to enter the underground zone. If the basement of Taj Mahal merely contains the tombs of the king and queen, why do we see multiple passages to access the same chamber? And why does the carbon dating evidence on the wooden door show that it was created centuries before Taj Mahal? Is it possible that the basement and the rest of the structures around the Taj Mahal were built centuries before King Shah Jahan? To understand this, we have to read the book called Padshah Nama, written by the court historians of King Shah Jahan. This book explains the king's decision to build Taj Mahal in memory of the queen, but the same book actually proves that the rest of the structures around it were already in place. It explicitly mentions that King Shah Jahan did not construct the Taj Mahal on a vacant land, but instead bought the ancestral palace or mansion from another king called Jay Singh and then constructed the white marble structure in that place. This is very intriguing because if King Shah Jahan wanted to build the Taj Mahal, he could have built it anywhere in the same area. The entire area is still vacant. But instead, he chose to buy an existing structure and built the Taj Mahal on it. Why did he do this? Because Constructing the Taj Mahal, the white marble structure itself, is a monumental project. In fact, King Shah Jahan almost became bankrupt because of it. If he chose to build the Taj Mahal on a vacant land, especially near the river, the expenses and efforts would double because he would have to create a massive foundation. The aerial view actually confirms that the basement and the rest of the structures were built a long time before the Taj Mahal. All the ancient structures were built completely out of red sandstone and bricks and resemble a fort. Yeah. These were merely modified by King Shah Jahan by adding white marble domes on top. This is a very clever architectural modification because we cannot understand this from the ground view at all. Now, let's go back to the underground zone of Taj Mahal. It is clear that this zone predates Taj Mahal, but what's inside? Is it possible that the basement actually holds an ancient secret which the authorities do not want us to find out? Did you notice the coins strewn on top of the sealed passage? These are religious offerings by locals who believe that the underground structure is a temple of ancient gods. Locals refer to this temple as the Badalgar Temple and claim that it stretches underground for many, many miles. So I searched Google Maps for Badalgar and the closest Badalgar is about 270 miles away. Can an ancient temple stretch underground for 270 miles? This seems kind of impossible, so I began hunting the nearby areas, and then I find something very interesting. 
at this magnificent fort called the Agra Fort. This is just two miles away from Taj Mahal. The original name of Agra Fort was Badalgarh. This is confirmed by historians and archaeologists. But again, we can see the same pattern. Historians clearly state that this structure was merely modified by King Akbar, who is the grandfather of King Shah Jahan. You can see that while the main structures are made of red sandstone, the domes are all made of different material. This is a breathtaking fort, but there is only one thing I'm looking for. An underground passage, or at least a small tunnel. And not surprisingly, there is a huge rectangular passage that goes straight underground and has meshed doors. But again, you can see that it is locked. I'm told by the tour guide that this is in fact an old passage that does go underground and is not used anymore, but it's been locked by authorities to prevent anyone from falling in and having accidents. Now, the problem is, it is locked from the inside of the passage. This is why you don't see a keyhole on this side of the lock. This means that at least one person is inside this passage as we speak. There should be no doubt about this. Who is using these underground facilities and why? And again, why do we see similar ventilation shafts mm -hmm. going vertically down all over the Agra fort as well? And here, in plain sight, we can see stairs that go down. As usual, this is also locked, but at least we can see what's inside. This is not just a small tunnel, but you can see a huge volume. And there's something very interesting here. A dome-shaped arch, very typical of Mughal architecture. The first look into this forbidden zone shows that these constructions may not be ancient. They were, in fact, built by King Akbar or by his descendants. And then I managed to peep through a hole. Here we can see some solid evidence that the underground structures belong to ancient times. The eight-faceted pillar with a square base which is found in almost all ancient Indian temples. In fact, there is a name for this in ancient Indian texts. It is called Ashtakonas Kamba. You can see these multifaceted pillars in almost any ancient temple in India, even the musical pillars of Hampi are multifaceted. Note that the pillar is also made of red sandstone, the same material which makes up Taj Mahal's basement. And these are newer brick walls built centuries later, modifying the ancient underground structure. And look at this area, a similar octagonal pillar has been removed because it was interfering with the newer brick construction. It is evident that King Akbar or Shah Jahan constructed these newer walls, which is why they look fresh, but the pillar looks much older. This proves that there is an ancient underground structure that is being hidden from us on top of which both this fort and the Taj Mahal are built. Remember, I said the distance between the Taj Mahal and Agra fort is about two miles. This is how the Taj Mahal looks from the Agra fort. This means a vast underground city stretches between them, much like the underground city of Elora Caves. So, what do you think? Why do we have a sealed basement inside the Taj Mahal. What is behind this entryway that goes underground? Why are locals worshipping this passage? What about the radiocarbon dating of the wooden door? Why did authorities immediately cover it with bricks? How do we explain these ventilation shafts? 
Why is this door locked on the inside at the Agra Fort, which is miles away from Taj Mahal? What about the ancient pillar found inside? But more importantly, mm -hmm. why are all these yep. places locked? In my mind, there's no doubt that there is a secret underground facility of some sort, an ancient mystery kept hidden from us. What about you? So it doesn't surprise me that not only are there secret passages, but right. what I've never known before, because the only pictures I've seen of the Taj Mahal only show the beautiful white marble. And how it changes color. Yeah, and, like and sometimes that. you like... see the water. But I've never seen pictures with red sandstone or the buildings around it, which you can totally tell they put those white tops on top to make it kind of appear more like mosque-like, yeah. more like the moguls did when they came and invaded. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at all if there's a Hindu temple or a whole Hindu city underneath yeah. the Taj Mahal that goes all the way to the Agra Fort. It would not surprise me at all. But... Why are they hiding it? Are they hiding it because the tourism at the Taj Mahal is so much that they don't want to lose the money because people might want to tear it down? Are they hiding it? You know, what are the reasons behind but it? But who's really going know. down there and what is down there? Because there right. are peoples for air. So it's not like everything's sealed off where mm -hmm. you can't breathe in there. Right. And then they'll, like the guy said, they said they blocked that one part of the Agra temple off because somebody could fall down. And I'm like, okay, but why is the lock on, on the, the inside. inside? And there's no way, even little hands, that you could put a lock from the other side. So that meant they came from the Taj Mahal and realized where it went to and boarded up and locked up the parts in the fort that so people couldn't get to those. Um so many so many questions but yeah. you know we know india has been invaded many many times by many different countries moguls were one of them the french the british i mean came left and right um and i think part of it was like he said who wants to build a new foundation that's going to cost even more money take a foundation that was already there um from what it sounds like from the history that he read now if that's true or not was that he purchased the the what was a castle um beforehand it sounds a little bit better than knocking a temple down and building a mosque on top of it yeah but we know a lot even the temples that didn't get torn down because they were either too big or massive or or they decided not to touch them, a lot of them have the sculptures with the hands broken off or the noses on the elephant trunks are gone. And so there's been a lot of destruction, even if they couldn't destroy the temples. And it was definitely like, you know, we came, we invaded, we want to conquer and we want to show that we're better than you. Um, kind of the history of barbarian conquer, you know, people yeah. coming in and taking over. Our thing is, you know, history is history, but we need to learn from it. Let's not necessarily knock down the Taj Mahal if there's a temple underneath, but let's make sure that, like at the border, you have the fighter jets, you have, you know, your military, you are not backing down from your neighbors. This is not the time of Gandhi anymore. You don't turn the other cheek and let them slap you. You slap them back just as freaking hard. Yeah. So... This is what I feel like we need to learn more of is like, make sure this kind of history doesn't happen again. India is a beautiful, welcoming country, but you need to make sure the people you welcome in are nice and you need to make sure your military is strong, you know, and you will slap back your neighbors if they start pestering you. Don't let them pick on you. You need to show them how strong you really are. You know, the U.S., we don't have we have issues but you don't see anyone starting wars with us our military is really strong part of it we feel like has to do with we design our own weapons and the citizens also have weaponry even if you don't want to go that far 
designing, bringing in that made in India, bringing in making your own weaponry, making your own tanks, making your own fighter jets, make this a part of that made in India and build up so you are strong because you are a great country and you don't need little, little neighbors um, trying to pick on you when you can show them how strong you really are. Uh, yeah, I kind of just wish that more people knew about the other things about India, the mm -hmm. big picture of India and not just the Taj Mahal because right. when people have pictures of India, it's Taj Mahal or it's the slums. Like, that's mm -hmm. what they think. And it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't just be like that. It should be more pictures of people who have impacted the world and India and not just the Taj Mahal, who which might actually be built on a Hindu temple. On a Hindu temple, which, by the way, here, most people believe the Taj Mahal is, is a, a temple. temple. Unfortunately, they don't, unless they know the history behind it. Which, which doesn't happen until they, sixth grade. <laughs> and But even then, do they really give you the idea of what it really is? Not really. You kind of have the impression that it's a temple, yeah. um, which it's not. Not. It might be built on top of one, but it's not a temple. Um yeah, I wish people really knew. You know, the song we just did the other day uh, was a beautiful, very patriotic song. Mm -hmm. And it in the song, he mentions, you know, Nobel Prize winners. He mentions, you know, how the number zero has impacted everybody, because anybody that uses a computer, um, thanks to India, you know, yoga and surgery. And yeah. the list goes on and on. And it's not stuff that only people in India have gain from it it's people the number all zero over we've the got world. computers because of that right so i wish there was a way other you know other than us doing this channel and hope more people in the u.s watch it um i wish there was a bigger way to really get it out there that india has so many things to offer not only has it done so much for humanity and the world and space it it's just you, it's not just it's the not Taj just the Mahal. Taj Mahal. It's not just Gandhi. It's not just the slums. You know, it. There's so much more. more to it. So, anyways, we will be doing some more from uh, Mohan, mm -hmm. um, Praveen. Um, he definitely has a lot of really good work, and Anjali and I love learning about the temples. Yeah. So. Um, we will do more. So I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as we did. And don't forget to subscribe. And join the wonderful growing Jan family. And, and we'll, we'll see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Bye. Bye.